How, when the gunman is dead, do you piece together a motive? Has that changed the nature of the investigation? And why does it matter mm -hmm. to figure out the motive at this point? To be quite honest, I I've, I I'm losing interest in motive because in, over the course of my career, I've tried to apply logic to lunacy and it doesn't work. When you're dealing with absolute severe mental illness, what made perfect sense to that person isn't gonna make sense to anybody else. We've already heard reports from the family that he was hearing voices, that something was wrong with when he got his hearing aid. And that's when he began getting this kind of paranoia or schizophrenic ideation, violent ideation. So um, I, I caution people to level set and manage your expectations when it comes to motivations. Okay, so I take your point on motivations, which I think then brings us to the parameters and structures that are in place about how people get access to guns. After the shooting, gun advocates started calling Maine's yellow flag laws, quote, woefully weak. What are these yellow flag laws? Yeah. How, in your view, can they be strengthened? Yeah, we've all heard, sadly, over the course of many mass shootings about red flag laws. That's where the police or the family can identify a threat and temporarily seize weapons with due process involving a magistrate or judge. And then while they investigate the threat, you might get your guns back if the threat is resolved. Maine has something quite different. This so-called yellow flag rule inserts a medical, uh, a mental health professional or a medical professional to have to sign off on taking your weapons. Here's why I don't like that. It gets a third party involved between a threat and remediation of the threat. If you've got something urgent, somebody's talking about shooting up a base, somebody's hearing the voices, and you've got to take time out and do a psych assessment, that's a problem for law enforcement. And so I'd like to see a tweaking of that. I, I hope Maine seriously reconsiders that. The police need to take care of business and due process needs to be attached. We're not taking weapons away forever, but we've got a threat that has to get addressed. I, I, we all were, I mean, absolutely gripped watching this story as it unfolded. When you talk about a manhunt uh, of this variety, what is it? that goes into that from a resource perspective, from an inner working perspective, specifically the interplay between the reliance on local law enforcement and when then all of a sudden you have federal law enforcement come in. Yeah, this is drinking from a fire hose. It, it is sensory overload for law enforcement leadership. The volume of data coming in at you while you're trying to desperately find someone who may kill again is overwhelming. And so in a state like Maine where resources are limited and you're, you're literally calling upon game wardens, fish and wildlife, the state police are driving in from the hinterlands. Here comes the FBI out of Boston saying, what can we do for you? It is extremely difficult. And then you must have to make serious decisions. Like we heard the police commissioner say, I'm rescinding the shelter in place order. That's a tough, hard call to make, but you can't shut cities down forever either. So it's in that mindset that we've got to practice together, and they do, they do. But rehearsal is nothing like the real thing.